Hey everyone, this is Sean, and you're watching uh, the newest installment in the book club series on my Pagan channel. So, today we will be reviewing, or I will be reviewing, um, Christopher Penzak's Inner Temple of Witchcraft, Magic Meditation and Psychic Development. Ooh. Now, what the, um, what the Inner Temple is, is a, it's the first book in a series called the Temple Series, all written by Christopher Penzak. Um, each book in the series is meant to work as a year-and-a-day program on your own, or uh, you can use it as a reference or just a workbook to look back to every now and then. It's got multiple purposes, but the most uh, common purpose that it's used for is for the Solitary Witch, who wants to do their own year in a day, self-initiation and everything. It's got everything in there for that. So um, what this book is based on, like all the books in the Temple series are focused on the five elements of witchcraft, which is fire, earth, water, air, and spirit. And the, the book on spirit is actually two books. It's two books that are separated. So. Um, but both of them are based on spirit. Uh, but the first book, The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, focuses on um, the basics of magic, the basics of understanding how magic works, as well as uh, working on meditative skills and visualization, as well as psychic development. Now, the book itself is broken up into two parts, in a sense. Um, there's no defined like in the table of contents where it says define like this is the part where you just get basic history and knowledge on stuff and then here's the actual year and a day stuff if you wanted to. No, um, they're all broken up into chapters but um, the first four chapters is an introduction to witchcraft such as, let's take a quick look here, um, oh, past the table of contents, wow. <laughs> Um, chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. The chapter 1 is called Ask a Witch. Um, chapter 2 is called Digging for Roots, where he explains uh, the different roles of a... Uh, actually, no. Ask a Witch is the different roles that a witch takes on. Uh, Digging for Roots is a brief history of witchcraft, starting from the Stone Age up until the Witchcraft Renaissance is what he calls it. And the third chapter, Flavors of Witchcraft, it gives um, a brief overview on different traditions, um, such as, let's go into that here. Um, Alexandrian, Cabot, Celtic, Christian Wicca, Dianic, and so on and so forth. And that's on different types of Wicca, and then it goes into other magical uh, traditions such as Asatru, Brujeria, Celtic Reconstructionist, Ceremonial, Chaos, Druidism, Egyptian, New Age, so on and so, so forth. And each section has like a little brief overview of what of who, in a sense, uh, discovered it. If it had a specific, dis uh, if it had a specific leader who discovered that, um, as well as a brief idea of what, t uh, what the general practice is. Um, table of contents. Let's go back to the table of contents because y'all know me. It's a make or break it. Uh, table of contents is really easy to use. Um, Obviously, you've got the table of contents where it talks about the chapters, but then it's got two different lists after that. A list of exercises in the book and a list of diagrams. Uh, the list of exercises are the different exercises that he has you do in the lesson portion, which is chapters 5 through 17. 
and uh, it has a specific page on where it starts as well as the name of the exercise. So if you're looking for a specific exercise, it makes it easier because you find the name, and then you look over, and then you find the page number. Uh, same thing for diagrams. It's, you find the name of the diagram that you wanted, you look over to the right, and there it is. It's right there. So it makes it very easy to find. Now on to the actual content. Um, the way that the information is presented makes it seem like um, it, he, Christopher Penzak has a way of putting out topics that seem like that they'd be really complicated and makes it easy to understand. He doesn't oversimplify it. He doesn't assume that you're not intelligent. He just assumes that you have not heard of this topic, which is what most writers would do whenever it comes to books like this. You, they assume that this person doesn't know about this topic. And so whenever he delves into a specific topic, if it isn't, if it's related to what the entire chapter is about, he delves into it extensively. Um, I know the book doesn't look that thick, but it's chock full of good information, as well as um, the way that it's put out. It doesn't, it's put out in a way where it doesn't seem like you're stupid. He knows that you're the person reading that has some semblance of an intelligence, and he doesn't make you feel, he doesn't belittle you with the way that he writes. Uh, I know that there have been a few books in my past where I've been reading it and they assume you know everything and that if you don't then you're just stupid. Well, no, Christopher Penzak is writing this in a way for beginners to understand and grasp the concepts and retain it, as well as uh, the intermediate practitioners would be able to expand on the concepts they had already had in, uh, in their mind about as well as for the uh, the veterans to look back and be like, oh, this is a new perspective on a, something that I practiced in the past. And it might bring them back into practicing something that they used to practice, but with a different perspective on it. So that's the reason why I personally like Christopher Penzak as an author. He understands the fact that the person reading this is intelligent, but he also writes it so that way you can grasp the entirety of whatever concept he's writing about as well as the ability to retain it. He puts it out in a way that you'd be able to retain it. So, um, it's a book, and this book is also a good book for laying the foundation for your practice. If you're just getting into it, you're not a part of a coven, or you don't have an open circle, or a very broad, big community in your neighborhood, and you want to practice solitary, I would definitely suggest this book and the Temple series, because each book covers different topics extensively. The Inner Temple of Witchcraft is very good for the beginners as well, because it helps to lay that foundation of understanding where witchcraft comes from, what witchcraft is, what roles a witch takes on when they decide to take this path, as well as um, building upon uh, psychic abilities and magical talent that may be latent within a person. Now, um, I've been talking so much about like, oh, well, this and this and that, but um, let me just give you an example on how he um, talks about himself. First chapter actually is really, the introduction of the first chapter is explaining what he realized about the craft. It, he looks at it and three different perspectives. He looks at it in a way that it is a science because there are certain things that you do, uh, you experiment, uh, there's um, correlations with everything, but it's also the way that he looks at it, it's an art, it's something that you perfect as well as the fact that it's also a spiritual practice and it helps you feel uh, spiritually sound. So he looks on, he explains each one of his views on different things. Um, actually, rather heftily. But yeah, there's the, the science, the art, and the spirituality. And he explains how um, each bit has influenced himself in his practice. And then he moves on to the different roles, um, such as the healer, the walker, the weaver. And then it moves on into the next chapter, which is Digging for Roots, where he expands upon um, and explains 
some of the background and some of the history of witchcraft, starting from the Stone Age, moving all the way up to modern times. Yeah, the modern world. And then the next one is the flavors of witchcraft, which I already discussed, talking about the different practices and traditions. Um, and then the fourth one, what was the fourth chapter? Oh, and then uh, the witch's path, he explains that being a witch is not an easy path to follow because you're going to deal with adversity as well as you've got to take on the fact that you, this is an entire lifestyle change. This is something that isn't just you go to Sunday, you, you go to church on Sunday and you're good and you live the rest of your life for the rest of the week. He explains that witchcraft isn't a religion, it's a spiritual practice. It's something that you do on a daily basis to make yourself feel spiritually sound and spiritually whole. On that note, um, and then he's got the different chapters, chapters 5 through 17, uh, chapter 1 focusing on the magical mindset, chapter 2 works on meditation practices, um, chapter, oh, sorry, 5 and 6, and then chapter 7 he moves on into the magic of science, explaining how science in itself can be considered to a form of magic. Um, chapter 8, the science of magic, how science can be applied to magic. Um, chapter 9, the art of defense, learning how to defend yourself energetically. Um, chapter 10, which I'm going to go ahead and give a quick look at. Oh, that's chapter 9. Oh, um, chapter 10 works on uh, the power of light, how um, light like uh, works in witchcraft, as in like you're sending a certain color of light to have a certain effect on someone to help them through a certain problem that they're having, that, that type of application. Um, chapter 11 works on energy anatomy. Chapter 12 is journey work. Uh, chapter 13, spirit work. Chapter 14 goes into the inner temple where I think you do a journey for yourself to find that inner temple in your mind. Uh, so a place of sanctuary and solitude for yourself as well as kind of like, I call in my practice I call it my home base. Uh, a place that you go when you journey to start your journey or that the place that you go to journey to to gain knowledge and to journey from out to the rest of the, uh, the other world. Um, chapter 15 works on energetic and spiritual healing. Chapter 16 he calls Born Again, which I'm going to do a quick look on that one too. It's been a while since I've read this book, but um, I read through the whole book and it was just amazing. Uh... Oh, duh, born again, as in reincarnation. He discusses the topic and subject of reincarnation. And then chapter 17, the last one, is uh, self-initiation. And then he's got an appendix in here on page 323. Um, and if you're doing this as a year and a day and you want to test how well you retain the knowledge, there's a self t it's a self-test in the background. In the appendix, it's a self-test, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's just six pages long, it's like 17 questions, but like, the first few I think are like definition, and then, the first one's definition, that's a few short answer, and then matching, um, and color, yeah, it's just, it's a really, if you wanted to take this in a way as like a personal, um, year in a day program, uh, it works. It's broken up specifically for that. So like you could do chapter, you read through the first four chapters and then you work on the fifth chapter on the first month. 
sixth chapter, seventh chapter, eighth chapter, and then so on and so forth. Each lesson that's presented to yourself. And then on the day of your last day of the year today, you do the self-initiation. And then afterwards, if you feel as if you want to take the self-test to test your knowledge and see how well you retain the information, you can do that. And that's, that's another thing I like about this book. It, you can test yourself. Or if you're going through a year and a day program with someone else, and the both of you are doing it at the same time, you both can do the self-test and test each other on this and be like, okay, well, this is where you need to work on it. This is where you're strong in, this is where you need to work on based on self-test. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good book. Um, and again, like I said, each chapter focuses on the subject for that chapter. And it doesn't deviate from that, but it also expands on different concepts that relate to the overall idea of the chapter, which makes it one of my more favorite books. Um, Christopher Penzak is one of my more favorite authors. Um, with a, he's a, out of all the uh, the pagan authors that I really like, I really only have like two that I definitely would always look to, and that's Scott Cunningham because he's put out so much information, so much knowledge, uh, and so many books that, like, he's got something for everyone. And then Christopher Penzak, because of the way that he writes, the way that he communicates the information to you, the reader, as well as um, just the general fact that he is an amazing writer, as well as um, the fact that the information that he puts out is good. And he promotes... Um, constant growth, like looking at different sources to find this information for yourself. Uh, and but he also provides great basis, and he's in, like through the. It's like he's your teacher through the book. It's he's the way that the voice from the book is, um, the way that the book speaks. In a sense, it's as if he's literally sitting there with you, talking to you and giving you a lecture, but a lecture that you're not going to pass out in because it's actually something that you're interested in. But yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would definitely rate this book a 10. This is one of the, a few books that I would rate as a 10 purely for the fact that the information is good, the, way, the writing style is good, it's easy to find the information, as well as it's just overall amazing especially for beginners. So um, on that note, that concludes this book review on The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, Magic Meditation and Psychic Development by Christopher Penzak. I wish you all, whether it is morning, noon, or nights, uh, many blessings, and I hope to see you all soon. All right, blessings be.